The other common problem we have when we're looking at GIS is to ask the question about how many of a certain item are within a certain distance of another item. So the example I'm going to show you here, we have the crosses and the blues. It doesn't matter what they are, but basically we have the blue dots versus the crosses, and I want to know how many crosses are within a given distance of each of the blue dots. So first of all, let's look at magnification at this little area here. There we go. So you can see the problem's quite tricky when you just look like that. So the first part of the solution of this problem is to how far to draw buffers around each of the blue dots at a given distance. So that is done under Vector Geographic Tool Buffers, right here. So you click this and up will come what you want. Now the blue dots, can you see the blue dots are called Hospital with Dent? So we pick Hospital with Dent. We want to uh, it doesn't draw circles, it draws line segments around it, but if you make enough line segments it will estimate to be a circle and then you want it within a particular radius. Now because of the way this is set up, and let me just go back and show you, if you right click and you look at the properties of each of these layers, we'll get this in here, and we'll have a look here. Do you notice these are in WGS84 coordinate reference system? And remember that was just one way that we convert a sphere into a flat map. Because these are in WGS84, they measure in degrees, not in kilometres or miles. Let's just check that they're all the same. We'll just check the other one because that's the other issue you need to make sure that all layers are in the same coordinate reference system or as otherwise it won't work. So this is WGS84 which is in degrees. Now just for a tip, at the equator a degree equals 111 kilometres. Obviously at each of the poles a degree equals zero metres. So you just have to be careful. This is actually from Malaysia which is right next to the equator so for the sake of the argument we can use the old 1 to 100 rule to give us, we'll get back to where we were, to give us the buffer distance. So if it's 100 kilometres, we want a 1 kilometre buffer, 0.01. Oops, 0.01 would be a 1 kilometre buffer. We'll make it precise because it's 111. Um, by dissolving the buffers, if two buffers bang into each other, they will then uh, be merged together. So we always hit dissolve and then we give it a file name. I'm going to call it the same as my little test one. Just replace that. It's cool. And here we go. Let it go. There we go. You can see now it's drawn the buffers underneath. So you can now see the buffers have been applied. Now remember our rule from before. The buffers are actually sort of uh, over the top of everything. So we just want to move them down through the list here. So we just move them down here. So yes, now we have the buffers below. What we can now do is actually do the counts. So counting is really easy. It's We've used the technique before. If you go to a spatial query, you can go spatial query, select source features from this whole bunch of red crosses. You can see they're the red crosses. You can check over here. There they are. That are, ah, now it won't show you the option until you choose the buffers that are within the buffers. So do you get it? We are going to select all the red crosses that are within the one kilometre buffer. We just press apply. Here we go. There we go. How do we know we've done it? Well, it said we've selected 374. So if you just want the statistical answer, you can just write that number down and call it quits. But if you actually want to see them, here they are here. You notice they've been highlighted as yellow. Any that are inside the buffer have gone yellow. So what we do now is we can actually save those yellow as a specific subset so we can present them separately. If you right click on them, on the, the data item that some are yellow, and you go save as, you want a shape file, you can browse to give it a name and I'm just going to call it something. I'll put a little testing directory. This is my real data, so I don't want to mess with that. We'll call it the um, within 
one kilometer. Save. Uh, save only the selected features. That's the critical one. I always forget to press it, but make sure you click that and add them to the map. So we go OK, like that. And there they all are. You can see they've now turned to red dots. You can turn off the buffers, you can turn off the other ones, and now you are looking at purely the ones that are within one kilometre. You can export that data if you want to then import it into Excel to look at what those actually mean. If you go Save As again against them, remember CSVs, if you save them as a CSV they are directly importable into Excel. So here we go, we'll do the same again. Uh, within one kilometer underscore CSV, it's going to save it as CSV. We don't want to add it to the map this time. We are done, we go OK, and they will now all be sitting there as that data set. So that's how we do buffers. Remember it's under Vector, Geo Processing Tools, Buffers. Remember the two key elements to the story are make sure that all layers are in the same coordinate reference system, and if you're using WGS84 it's degrees, and remember the little tip, 111 kilometers equals one degree at the equator.